So I have uh, Haimo Shower on the line with me tonight, and uh, we're going to discuss egalitarian movement. And uh, with that, we're going to get into specifics of it. Uh, we have Haimo with us right now. Haimo, thanks for doing this, first of all. Of course. I'm happy to be on. Uh, I like working with um, people in the, well, I should say world community that are actually of like mind to care about um, you know, getting rid of the, basically the bottom line is getting rid of unnecessary suffering in the world. And what I mean by unnecessary, I mean things that really aren't, things that are actually caused by human beings and their, either their, you know, lack of knowing what they're doing or simply that they have greedy, sinister motives for doing it. And uh, those are the things that hopefully we can minimize that so that there's as little unnecessary suffering in the world as possible. So with that said, uh, can you explain to, to all of us what the egalitarian excuse me, uh, movement is and what that means? Well, I mean, I think people are used to, you know, uh, an idea of, of, of uh, sharing and of uh, people being able to have more of a share of the stuff they've actually contributed to, you know, um, in, in society, usually in a capitalist society, what happens is you contribute certain things, but a lot of what you've contributed to society gets used or taken away from interests of of people that are in a more powerful position. They take the the spoils of your work, your labor, your energy, or whatever, and they uh, and and they they control things and direct things and and, and even control whether uh, whether you have any democracy or not, or if you have a little bit or whatever. And um, um, in an in an egalitarian system, what's fundamental is sharing uh, to some extent and being able to sh- uh, keep uh, what you put into society, but even better than that, being able to contribute with what you know and have other people contribute with what they know, and together you all have enough of what everyone needs. Um, in a sense, we already are in a society where that's, that's possible. If it wasn't for the hoarding going on by the what I call the wealthy parasites, then actually there would be, an, a, great, there would be a great abundance of that would be significant for a decent, decent standard of living uh, everywhere in the world. So uh, the egalitarian idea is to, um, to give, you know, because the people that are in power are not in power because they have any special wisdom. They're in power because they've already had the resources through generations of, through generations or through, 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 um, ruthlessness that is encouraged by the system that they were that they functioned under that was put into place by other people that already had great wealth and uh, so those people making the decisions doesn't make much sense because the only thing that they have uh, they're not necessarily smarter than every scientist they're not necessarily smarter than the school teachers that are that are, that are obviously not as rich as they are. They're not, sometimes they're, they're even less knowledgeable about basic things that the average human being that lives in a society is familiar with. Or even, or even um, some studies have shown that, that when it comes to ethics, that um, very wealthy people tend to be actually much worse there than the average person, which means that the wisdom to move forward is not by allowing those people to stay in charge. Now, with that said, uh, would there be a class system under an uh, egalitarian society? No, egalitarian society is one that's, that 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 local assemblies, that um, communities have more direct. It's it's it's. You could say it's it's very similar to a, a, a very organic type of direct democracy. 
where you have people making the decision for what goes on in their communities based on local rep- local representatives that 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 the community agrees to and they're more directly connected to everybody in the community um and those people have the ultimate say as to whether or not this or that but it's just coordinated with other groups or other people and 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 look but based on these local assemblies now, direct democracy is, uh, I mean, we all know it's a system where each citizen uh, of a state, of a, of a province, of a country would have a direct say through, uh, um, through a referendum. Right, uh, exactly. Would and, there that's be... very, and that's very parallel to what we're talking about. It's, it's, it's very similar. Matter of fact, if you look at probably what is sometimes cited as a good example of how an egalitarian system works is, uh, you know, has worked is is Spain from 1936 to 1939. Uh, I think it was half of Spain or something like that that had a uh, uh, an egalitarian system basically put in place by uh, people that describe themselves as anarchists. Um, but uh, but basically the setup was pretty much an egalitarian situation where people manage more directly their own affairs and coordinated with others in order to get larger projects done. So, um, but yeah, but having everybody uh, have a voice where, and also the, the problem is not just everybody having a voice, the problem in, as you know, in our system is that um, our voices are also interfered with by people that are in a more powerful position financially or or the, the people that have been appointed by them. They often interfere with it. It's not just that we don't have a say. We actually have our say-so say interfered with as well. Um, and those are things that I think... Uh, and I think we're... You know, I don't know if direct democracy is as much involved in the direct democracy groups. I don't know if they're as much involved in getting rid of the people that interfere with democracy as well because th- we're all going to come up against them regardless of what we advocate for. Um, so hopefully, you know, I mean, we're on the same page already on, in terms of how we want to see people um, have their voices heard directly and, and, and for their concerns. Well, direct democracy, again, it's, it's the, the will of the majority. Uh, so yes. uh, we know that the the upper class, the I don't know, the the minority, uh, would have a bit of a voice, but they wouldn't have a a, a voice quite like like the uh, like the majority. Of course, if they are part of the majority, then it's a, it's a bit of a different story. But it's it's simply just a, a it's, it's just a political system that uh, organizes society in a more fair or democratic way. Right. So well, I guess well, there are strong parallels between egalitarianism and, of course, direct democracy, for sure, yeah. Right. The person that, that has, and, and, and hopefully you can bring him on sometime, is the person that has very detailed information about, um, you know, more, more detailed information about how an egalitarian system would actually work would probably be uh, John Spritzler is very much, he's written a lot on that. Um, and he's got articles and books on the subject. He's got numerous articles. I've read many of them, and I think, and what drew me to John Spritzler was the fact that it, his stuff was already parallel to what I was thinking about for years. And when I saw that, I said, wow, this guy is, is really uh, uh, an ally. We became friends, even though he's in Boston and I'm in San Francisco. And uh, we've coordinated our efforts, and I work with other people, and they don't, they don't have to agree with me on every issue because, you know, as long as their efforts don't undermine mine and mine don't undermine theirs, I don't care if they're working on every aspect. It's like there's a lady who uh, is a good friend of mine, uh, Sarah Friels, and she, she wants to shut down the DNC because of the corruption and because there's people that are trying to make so that it, democracy doesn't work at all. 
and she wants to shut shut it down because she wants to see that uh, that uh, uh, you know that, that that anything that corrupt where where people's democracy isn't working that she is putting her efforts into shutting that down. I, I consider her an ally in that sense, even though she's working on a different thing because what she's doing helps direct democracy, it helps egalitarians, it helps all of us in a different way. So I, 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 I see as long as somebody isn't, how do you say it, in opposition to, to, to values that would, uh, that would free the ordinary person and give them more power, then I, I don't have a problem with people in different groups that do other things. I, 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 I love and admire them for that. Well, see, the, the problem I have with that, though, uh, Hamo, is that, um, we, you know, you're kind of putting too much effort to, to get rid of the DNC. But the problem always arises is that when you get rid of one politician, uh, and then there's the hope that the next guy is going to do better. But uh, well, I don't. You know. I don't think that that's that, that's her, that's not her 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 opinion. But by the way, she's also the the interesting thing is she's also interested in uh, more direct democracy, and she's also interested in egalitarianism. She just does not make that her main thrust in terms of what she, the angle the the stuff she's working on. But that's why I'm saying she's not like, it's not like she believes just leave a vacuum. She's with us on, um, they are actually, we, we have, but sometimes, you know, it's funny, I, I've seen conflict between people that are so, so much on the same page, and sometimes there's conflict and friction that doesn't even need to be there to that level, because the thing is, you know, I mean... There are certain things that might, where one person say, well, no, no, I don't agree with that. That's okay, but but it's like sometimes they're so minor, it's just that the way the person states it or the angle that they're coming at, at the subject from, of, uh, it rubs people the wrong way, and then they kind of get mad at each other when, in fact, they're really, uh, so, I've seen people that are really on the same side getting into that kind of situation, and that. That that is is something I try to help them resolve it usually when I get involved, because I, I don't want to see division um, where there doesn't need to be division. I mean, some divisions are necessary because if we really don't agree on certain things and our values are really in opposition, I think it's better to be divided, but not if that's not necessary. I think. There's well, if we're total polar opposites, then I understand. But um, yeah. but but the whole, I mean, I uh, look, I agree with with a lot of what you say, uh, Hamo, and the I know, I know. And I, I've always I, I like communicating with you because I feel that you're also not um, rigidly defined by one idea, one con concept, one angle to the point where you don't see how the other things fit. No, because it's only one side of the story. And there's, and there's millions of people that have, have ideas that can contribute. Uh, and, you know, who are we to say that, you know, he, that guy has no, uh, has, he doesn't have a voice. He doesn't get to have a voice, which this system really is, if you really break it down, this, this um, uh, representative democracy and I don't care what Americans say, it is a democracy, but it's just a different form of democracy followed by a constitutional republic. But my point is, uh, Haimo, is that, uh, you know, you don't have a voice, okay? They just give you this illusion every four years that you mark an X on a ballot. And then, uh, you know, and they sell you on this uh, representative democracy thing, and they call it democracy. And that's why a lot of people have a problem with the word democracy, because our mainstream political parties have subverted it. Okay, they twisted it into something really, really ugly. Um, I think John Spritzer originally, I think he had a group called, um, I don't think it was, it might have been New Democracy or something along those lines. I forget what it was called in Boston because, you know, even though he used, uh, that, he used that before, he was using the term egalitarian. And I think democracy just has, a, it has just like socialism has a lot of, dirty things attached to it, so it is, and democracy even more so, because when you couple 
democracy with capitalism, then the problem is is that capitalism cancels out democracy. And and some people say, no, you're talking about no. There's 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 real demo- real capitalism doesn't do that. Well, that's not quite true because if you actually look at the term. Um, and, and the and the system of capitalism it actually allows for some to gain more capital through the use of others goods and services in a way that eventually concentrates more power to less people uh, and that's the reason capitalism is such a big problem because it actually subverts a democracy well that I, I can't disagree with you on that I mean, it's, uh, you know, I hear when people say, ah, we don't live in a capitalist society. It's crony capitalism. I was like, ah, no, no, no. It By starts the way, off, know, uh, all ca- it all starts off nicely, but it ends up, uh, it always ends up uh, that uh, somehow, some way, somebody wins the Monopoly game, you know? Yep. And, and, and all capitalism ends up being crony capitalism anyway. It doesn't take long for capitalism to end up being crony capitalism because that's the nature of, Crony capitalism usually refers to some kind of favoritism or whatever that's done that doesn't follow the so-called open free market type of thing. So, you know, when things start to be rigged. But when there's a concentration of power, what's to stop those people from rigging it? So all capitalism leads towards crony capitalism anyway. Well, not only that, but it's the overconsumption of, of natural resources unnecessarily, destroying of the planet. Oh, by it's, the way, uh, that's a very good point. That's a very yes. good point because it's almost like production is almost like defines, like just cranking up production and, and, and being in the rat race is what we all live for. That is kind of an insanity. It is. It's insanity. It, it's, it's absolute insanity. And that's why when you guys were talking about, the, you know, the egalitarian movement and direct democracy, you know, they're one and the same. It's just that one system helps you get towards an egalitarian society. Because well, think I th- about I th- it, you have, I th- I think you have the, the will mean- of the majority agreeing. I think the means to get there right now, we're kind of, all of us are a little bit at a loss in the sense that so different, us, different people want to do different things in terms of, you know, some people you know, want a full-blown revolution. Other people want to try to force the laws to change. I think both of those angles are important, actually, because I think what happens is, let's say, for example, that you're trying to push for getting a referendum for, for, so that people can be represented more directly. And let's say the people in power just aren't hearing you no matter what you're saying. No matter whether you try to implement it, they don't let you do it. Well, the, all the people that want a revolution, the pressure that they push, the put, put put on people, the more pressure that there is, the more coercion that's going on at the same time, the easier it is to even sit on a, a negotiating table. Nobody negotiates with people if everything is totally peaceful. That's why, you sh- that's why the Israelis always demand peace before justice, because they know if there's peace before justice, they know that they're not going to do anything. That's right. And the same way our system, and with direct democracy or whatever people are trying to push, um, I mean, why did, did any of the New Deal go through with FDR at all, even though FDR is not the prince everybody thinks he is if you look into his history? But the point actually, is, actually, Spain, yeah, and uh, those years that you mentioned were the actual the Spanish Civil War, and I read a book about that, and it's a fantastic uh, book called uh, Spain in Our Hearts, and it was about the uh, the fascist Franco, and the right. Republic, who were egalitarians uh, by far, but when they reached I, I, out know, to you know when you they know reached out to uh, FDR, FDR ignored them because he was afraid that the Vatican was going to uh, basically blackball him and nobody would vote for him in the next election. So, yeah, he, was, he is not the hero that everybody says he is. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, uh, I mean he, he killed a lot of – he had protesters killed, you know, when they had uh, uprisings. So it's right. like he's done, he's done some things that were really not – you know, if you look at his history, he's not, he's not the uh, 
the sweetheart people think he is. He was just trying to save capitalism in some sense. He was. So, but uh, but what you were saying about Spain, I'll just bring that up real briefly. It's it's interesting to Franco. But the one thing that he kept in place, and one thing even after him, that was kept in place in Spain until the year 2014 was commercial rent control. And the wealthy people undid that. In 2014, the wealthy people got rid of commercial rent control and thousands of small mom-and-pop places folded across the country. I don't know if you heard about that. but that's, that's No, I haven't, no. But that was a really sad thing because... And in the United States, it's blocked so be- so much. You know, they really got people trapped to have to go to a corporate job or something. That, that And the reason a lot of the – they say small businesses employ a lot of people, but they can't employ that many people because they get their overhead raised on them all the time because a lot of them rent. They don't own the buildings, especially small businesses. The smaller the businesses, the more they're likely to rent rather than own the buildings. So across the United States – there's only been one city that ever passed commercial rent control, and that was in Berkeley from 1985 to 1988. They, had, they passed commercial rent control, and the wealthy people moved in. They took it to court. They shot it down. And uh, the different places in the United States started passing laws to make it difficult to even try to pass it. And cities that have the power to actually try to push for it the representatives won't even listen to you if you even mention it to them, because I've tried. Like in San Francisco, I've tried with some, some of the, whether it was the mayor or, or other representatives, I've tried to bring it up. Nobody will want to even listen to you. They don't want to touch it. It just shows how corrupt. And we're talking Democrats. They're totally corrupt in terms of they don't want to hear anything about commercial rent control, even though that would hire millions of people throughout whatever, I mean, not, not, in, but not in a particular city, but I'm saying if that was something that was passed throughout the entire United States, commercial rent control itself would, would create so many jobs that we wouldn't need the wealthy people to create them all. Yeah, and again, through, through mainstream politics, okay, these uh, wealthy, uh, these wealthy people, by off politicians, they change the bylaws yes. so that they can monopolize on the economy. I mean, it's, exactly. I mean, it's a no-brainer. What, you, what I like about what you do is ever since I first came into contact with you, you didn't freak out about me taking a little bit of a different angle than you or whatever. You didn't freak out about that. We, we, we talked, you know, we, we push different issues in different ways sometimes. But I noticed that you see that people can, people can work together more than they think they can. And they often, even when people have two different approaches, like I said, if you have the mob outside, then the head of a corporation is more likely to speak to the level-headed person that wants to talk because of the pressure of that. So, so people, all these things can work together, um, but there has to be some coordination to make it maximally effective. I think you're hitting on a good point, because you know what I do, and I think this is what you do as well, and I think this is what we all need to do. All different groups need to say they can be true to their, what they're pushing and still include rather than exclude yes. other, other groups. In other words, Sarah Friels, for example, she's a good example because she does focus on one thing, but, I mean, she could be a little more inclusive, but the point is she does actually include my work, and she actually put John Spritzler's articles out there, and she actually has supported other yeah, as long as she thinks they're friendly or, or that they, they don't disrespect her efforts, she actually will um, support to some but extent. Hey, 
Yeah. But hey, Mo, people, and I think you're, I think I know who you're talking about because I think she's associated with a, a lady in her 60s who's from Boston. Oh, you're talking Deb about Deb, Deb Della? Now, okay, now, all right, so since we're on the topic here, okay, yeah. I reached out to Deb. And you had problems there, right? Oh, big time. And she actually outed me, which, you know what, well, that's fine. She's upset. She's frustrated. I don't know her personally. She might have some serious personal issues, okay? But, you know, what really bugged me is the fact she didn't take the time to really investigate what direct democracy was. Because when she explained it to me, right. she, was in, she was actually including politicians. Well, no, that's not how direct democracy works. Uh, direct, think, democ- think- direct democracy does not involve political parties. They do not have the final say. It's the citizens of your country or your state or your local municipal or city or town. They have the final say. But that's what angers me is that, listen. No, I think the problem is, and I think it was, I don't think it was fair that, that she did that, but I think the problem is that there are different direct democracy people out there, and some of them have given it, um, some of them have given it a bad name. You know, because some of them, direct democracy people are actually, <laughs> they're pro capitalist, some of them. But see, but that's the beauty of direct democracy, though, Hamo, is that it's it, it works for everybody. No, but the problem. Okay? And, and, and again, I'm not. I'm, but I'm not. I'm not a pro capitalist. I know. But I'm, I'm not I, know pro- I know you're not. But I'm saying that the problem is, is that. Some but we can't. People- but we can't divide ourselves. If they're pro capitalist, we have to convince them that it's not a good system. It's right, not efficient. Right. I, I, I know I'm not I'm not the type I'm not the type of person that automatically I've tried to have dialogue with people that are into what he called direct democracy but they're actually pro capitalist. I've tried to have dialogue with them. I've actually talked to them for a long time. Um and uh I don't really I I don't I'm not against them for doing direct democracy. I still think it's good they're involved in doing direct democracy, fine. But they're not people that, but those particular people, they, the, the attitudes they have, I can't really work with them. Not because... Oh, yeah, that, look, that listen, doesn't listen. Mean, that doesn't mean I don't support the, their efforts in, uh, for, for pushing for direct democracy. I, I won't smear them on that aspect. Hey, Mo, hey Mo, I got a, a certain individual... <clears throat> And I think I think you know who I'm talking about. Okay, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mention his name. He's a he's a direct democracy advocate. Right. So he thinks he is, but he's always pushing money. He's no, always know, pushing the I capitalist know, system. It's, it's yeah, we're not, not gonna mention his name. We're not no, gonna I'm mention not gonna his mention name. His, I'm not gonna but, mention his name. Either. But here's the problem. But here's the thing. If he supports direct democracy and he's actually making efforts to try to get it implemented, then right. I'm with him. But yes. in terms of his personal uh, his personal motives to you yes. know to enhance capitalist i'm not with him and that's right. the beauty of direct democracy everybody needs a voice everybody needs listen they need a platform we can't we can't have a platform with the current political system that we have in place now it's just not going to happen because those guys are they're way past capitalism you know these guys are all about ho- uh, hoarding wealth and yeah. and so-called trickle down uh, economics which is absolute nonsense Okay, that is, that is a polar uh, opposite of what we're trying to support here. But By what I'm way, trying I to agree, say is, I agree with you. I don't. I don't. I, I'm not into um, if somebody wants to be part of, um, you know, they want to, uh, you know, push for direct democracy too. Fine. I mean, I have a couple of. I have actually two people. I actually asked one of them if he knows the other one because I'm not going to mention names since you don't want the names mentioned. I won't no, mention no, them. No, no, no. So <laughs> I, I have. I know two people. That both are, they're both that have the same point of view. I even asked one of them that I had a telephone conversation with recently. The one that you're talking about, I think I had a telephone conversation with him, a long telephone conversation, and mm-hmm. I asked him if he knew the other guy because the other guy I talked to for a long time too, and it turns out that <laughs> they're they're both people that I'm glad they're pushing for direct democracy. But they're not exactly people I can work with because they're also pushing. Both of them are pushing a cryptocurrency, and that's just bullshit. Because it's like it's it, it's like what the hell are you doing, guys? You know, it's like 
Cryptocurrency is just like any other uh, thing that, that, that helps wealthy people get richer faster than everyone else. It just accelerates the divide between the haves and the have-nots like everything else does. These guys that I'm not going to mention their names, they're both interested. I can, I can smell it. They're both interested in actually improving their own situation, their own wealth. I mean, for heaven's sakes, one of them is even, it, it very callously, is even into hunting. I mean, he kills bears and moose and whatever, and he doesn't even care about what the hell he kills, and he doesn't even have to do that. He, he, he moved to a place just so that he could kill things. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm, I'm just saying, but, but, but yeah, these, uh, both of these guys think of themselves as a bit entrepreneurial in their attitude. Uh, you know, so I understand why people like that might have been people that Deb Della ran into. And if she ran into people like that, I understand why she might be jaded. I, I, I don't know if she's difficult well, to deal with. Well, but the thing is, is that she she's might, painting everybody with the same brush, though. She might she be, though, yeah. And she, uh, maybe she's a little difficult to deal with. By the way, I know, know some good people that I like that still overgeneralize and attack people because they overgeneralize and they paint everything. And, and, and some of them I can still get along with. I still talk to them. And, I, and, and some of them are great allies. They're actually people who hold the same values you do. I mean, Deb Della and you probably hold some of the, most of the same values, actually. Even though well, you might well, not we probably able. do, we probably yeah. do, but she she kind of shut the door on that. I know, but I that's know. okay. I mean, look, 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 I, I look, I'm not a kid, you know, uh, and, and and I get over that pretty quick. And I, I actually even, even you know, I respect, left a couple I respect messages. you for that because you have yeah. you 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 are the type of person that I I like the way you talk because of the fact that you're the type of person somebody can 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 argue and disrespect you with uh, respect you and disrespect you and at the same time you can say okay i might even agree with this person but somehow uh, uh, the the dynamic between the two of us fell apart and it's not and it looks like it might not go back together again you know and that's okay that's going to happen right but anyways uh, uh hey mo let's uh, finish this up uh sure. any last words any last words you want to you want to say before we end this? Yeah, sure. I I I I want to get back to the point of the uh, the thing that you stress and that I stress. And uh, the word stress is perhaps perhaps a good word <laughs> because sometimes hmm. it is stressed. It is. Um, is that you and I like the idea of uniting where we can with people, and the yellow vest movement. In France, one of the things I really like about it is the fact that the ruling class was not able to divide them on little uh, on was not able to divide them up and, and and keep them separate from each other. And you have right wing and left wing people that see problems with capitalism. They see problems with the ex exploitation of the wealthy. And, and and they've come together on that, and, and there's some things that they realize they really believe in the same thing. And you and I both want to help build that kind of consensus like what, like, like what they do in France, but also to deepen the communication to the point where it becomes more potent and moves forward to the point where we have both an egalitarian revolution and a direct democracy, however it gets in, put in place, whether it's evolution or revolution, that we stay focused on, you know, making sure that, that, that we have a society where there's no poverty, because it's not necessary in the modern world. And where everybody doesn't have to run a rat race just to live, you know, and I think that's what we're pushing for. I think you and I both are pushing for that. And, um, and I think egalitarianism, direct democracy, uh, of, of other forms of democracy, even, even some people in the socialist movement, if it's real socialism rather than the watered-down versions of our fake progressives here, um, 
But all these different groups, they actually share a lot of the same values, and we need to communicate and switch the language up a little bit so they realize that we don't have to parrot our, the, 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 the language that we tend to use in our group. We can switch our language up a bit so that we can build those bridges. There you go. So the key word here is unity. So if anybody's listening to this, yeah. it's unity. We've got to find common ground. Okay, we've got the to find that common goal. The only people that we have to be wary about are people who really don't value a more egalitarian society. Those people we have to we have to keep our defenses up with those people. Other than that, you know, we should try to work with everybody who has some kind of an egalitarian value. And it doesn't have to fit what's defined by this egalitarian or that egalitarian. But anybody who has some kind of an egalitarian value, they, they are our family. They're all family. Okay. Hey, Mo, way, thank, thank you. you ve- thank you very no, thank, much. I want to thank you so much for coming and, and doing this. And you, and, too, uh, and you too. I do thank you because I like the way you reach out. I like the fact that you care about these things. I, I, I like the fact that, uh, and I think you're going to perhaps even be able to rebuild that bridge with Deb Della. I, I, I think there's even a possibility of reconciliation there. You might even find yourself... Well, my door's open. My door's open for sure. So, <laughs> well, I, 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 I think there's a possibility of that, especially if she knows that uh, if you're talking to somebody like me, I think she'll see that you're not like the people that she's wary about. Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. And again, uh, Hamel, thank you for so much for doing this, and we, we definitely got to do this again next time. Nice talking with you, and you have uh, you have a very good day, and uh, and I think we can enjoy. Um, um, you know, today is a good day that we did this because uh, we were we're kind of by doing this we're also honoring Martin Luther King Jr. Absolutely. So that was it. That's it, guys. Uh, again, thanks to uh, Hamill for coming on, and until next time, thank you. <laughs>